GTN headquarters in Beijing. This is the Hub with Wang Guan. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. On this day last year, the last U.S. troops pulled out of Afghanistan post-hasty, abandoning it to chaos and crisis after two decades of occupation. One year on, how do the Afghans judge America's so-called war on terror? Well, the quote-unquote graveyard of empires also be a graveyard for President Joe Biden's election ambitions in November. And most importantly, how can Afghanistan be rebuilt by Afghans for Afghans? To look at Afghanistan after a year of sweeping changes, Hamza Momam Hakimi joins me from Cabo, Afghanistan. He's professor of law and political science at Cabo Salam University. And also in Beijing, we have Wang Li, professor of international relations and diplomacy at the School of International and Public Affairs at Jilin University at, in Northeast China. Uh, welcome, gentlemen, to the program. Um, let me start with you, Professor Hakimi, if I may. After two decades of the United States so-called war on terror and occupation of Afghanistan, the China Global Television Network think tank and the Chinese Institute of Public Opinion at Renmin University did a survey on Afghanistan. Uh, it covered 24 countries, including Afghanistan. I want to show you a bit of the results here. Over 78% of the Afghan residents, respondents rather, said overthrowing the government of a sovereign country under such a pretext was quote unquote completely wrong. Um, why do you think is the American war so negatively perceived even when Washington self justifies it? Uh, good morning to you and the uh, distinguished guests and the respected viewers. <clears throat> I think, uh, first of all, it is related to the nature of Afghanistan people. The Afghan people has always been against the occupation, as any other nation of the world. Uh, and, and, and the other side, we totally see that the American history for the past one and a half century, they, uh, or over the past one century, they have lived through interventions into occupations of the other countries. <clears throat> uh, no matter what reason or what cause, they show up for that. But it's the nature of the cowboy American uh, nature that they occupy the other people's country. Uh, the so-called war on terror was just a reason on a paper used uh, for occupation of Afghanistan. <clears throat> uh, the the uh, what they call the ter the terrorist groups that that they they were in Afghanistan. Uh, the people who attacked America on 9/11 they were not connected to Afghanistan anyhow. They are they were not Afghans. They were from other countries. And yet, the American uh, regime, the American government, did not present any piece of uh, uh, evidence that shows or proves uh, that they are engaged in that. Uh, the, the groups that they are claiming that they were engaged in 9-11 uh, incidents, they were actually engaged. And uh, most amazingly, none of the American courts yet decided that it was Al-Qaeda uh, precisely that who attacked 9-11. Before any court decision, before anything is within the hours after the 9-11 incident, American president, uh, president uh, announced that it is a terrorist attack and the Al-Qaeda group is the, behind these attacks and Afghanistan is re responsible for that. And within uh, 24 hours they have announced that they are going to attack an, uh, a sovereign uh, country which was Afghanistan. Uh, um, the leadership of Taliban at that time, leadership of the Afghanistan government at that time, announced that they are ready to negotiate with the Americans on terms of how they could solve this, this problem. They have presented uh, many options of uh, uh, bringing uh, uh, those who are responsible for 9-11 to justice in a court in Afghanistan or an international court or, or any midway uh, to avoid the war. But the Americans wanted the war and wanted the occupation anyway yeah. and anyhow. War on terror was just was just a, a, a title they have used. They attacked Iraq anyway two or three years after Afghanistan. There was not war on terror. They just a lie was there, weapon of mass destruction. They've killed millions of Iraqis. And after 20 years, Tony Blair came out to the media and said that I'm sorry, we were wrong. We we did a mistake. I mean, there's and so much Western propaganda. Of millions of Iraqis um, paid the for their mistake. How much Western elites used to use this word propaganda? onto other nations, mostly its rivals and adversaries. Professor Wang Li, let me bring you in this conversation. How do you think America's so-called war on terror changed Afghanistan? Thank you very much for having me. And as, a, as an academic person, I want to say that the war was initiated, started by America, no doubt. But at the beginning, 
America was sympathy after the attack 911. America was did sympathy and even supported by the majority of the world, including China and Russia. However, that doesn't mean that China or the world supported America to invade our sovereign country by force to top a government. Actually, after American top the government, American set up a new regime, which was very pro-America and Western countries. However, America never put enough or even limited support to the infrastructure. No people's interests, no economic re rebuilding, just uh, from the geopolitical interests to contain the neighbors who are major powers. In this case, to answer the question, how did American change the world? We can summarize into three perspectives. Nationally, American totally destroy our country, our sovereign country. Second, um, economic, socially speaking, American never pay attention to the common people, particularly the people in the countryside. The third is that internationally, American never promoted Afghanistan to be a real sovereign independent country in the world community. Thank you for those insights. Uh, and also, when you look at Afghanistan, there are so many angles to look at it. Uh, when the U.S. occupied Afghanistan, a promise to make the country stable, strong, and prosperous. But here's a set of data that I want to show both of you. A whopping 79% of Afghan respondents say the U.S. has not kept its promise. Afghans saying this, not China, not Russia. Um, Professor Hakimi, let me turn back to you. President Joe Biden even distanced the U.S. from the assurance given by his predecessors, saying you know, nation building was never an option, was never supposed to America's mission in Afghanistan. What does it mean for Washington's credibility and policy continuity when you look at um, you know, the war on terror past 20 years? Actually, what uh, Mr. Biden said uh, is true. What their uh, ex-president said, that was wrong. The Americans uh, tried to uh, westernize Afghanistan with all the means they got. They have spent billions and hundreds of billions of dollars on media only to westernize Afghanistan, to change the norms in Afghanistan people, to change the mentality of Afghan people. That's what they did. They tried for the last 20 years. But the biggest failure for the Americans in Afghanistan was their understanding of the Afghan mentality. They failed to understand how Afghans think and how Afghans deal with those who want to change their norms, those who want to change their culture. This is the biggest failure of the uh, Americans in Afghanistan. They did want to uh, change Afghanistan, but not according to the norms of Afghanistan, but not according to what was good for Afghanistan. They wanted to change Afghanistan according to their own benefits. They wanted Afghanistan to turn into a colony that will remain under the Western or American influence even after they leave Afghanistan, even after they, they, they don't, don't exist in Afghanistan anymore. They wanted to be the Afghan nation, a representative of America in the region. They wanted to separate between the Afghan nation and their neighbors in their regional countries and their uh, uh, cultural hug of Afghanistan, if, if the expression is correct to use. Afghans are an integral part of this region in this, play, in, in this area. We have relations with our neighbors, with, with our, the countries of the region. We have a 5,000 years history of culture in, a, in this area. Americans wanted to change that. And when they failed on that, they said we never wanted to, to build a nation. Afghanistan was not a desert to build a nation in that. We, we, ha, we have been a nation and we are a nation. We have a history long, long, long back than Americans. Uh, what Americans wanted to, to build in Afghanistan. No, they have destroyed a lot more than they have built. Statistics talk about very much about that very much. Only 16% of Afghan women was literate. 16% only. In 2021, I'm talking, after 20 years of American existence and after billions of dollars they have spent on what so-called women empowerment in Afghanistan. Only 15% of Afghanistan women had access to the media and Internet. That is under uh, Afghanistan, under American uh, 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 occupation. 
and that is mainly because the Afghanistan nation and the Afghan people refused this process of, of, of uh, Americanization or Westernization of Afghanistan. When it comes to a foreign occupation, Afghanistan people will and always will be resisting that occupation. And when it comes to changing the norms or Westernizing or Americanizing the Afghanistan, you would find the uh, resistance harsher and harder from Afghanistan people. So what can I say is that Americans did fail, but what they did fail First of all, they fail in understanding Afghanistan and Afghan people, nature, and second, they did fail in Americanization and Westernization of Afghanistan people in Afghanistan society. Professor Wang Li, uh, you know, speaking from the perspective of a Chinese scholar, do you want to comment on what uh, Professor Hakimi just said? Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I want to say, I want to say something, yes. And uh, I fully, first, I fully agree with uh, my colleague from Afghanistan because he's native, he knows he know his country much better than outside. And as an academic person who studied in America for many years, I would like to say that, yes, it is American nature to change other country and uh, even culture. America was, has been very successful over the past 200 years, no doubt. However, America never pay attention or even the minimum respect to the other cultures and the people. They don't care to destroy other country or culture, but they believe they have a capability to rebuild other country and culture. However, in according to their own image and the values. This is why American failed. American never pay attention to the local people needs and the history and the culture. They always want to change according to American image, so-called shared values. That doesn't matter. This is why America is uh, very proud, is very arrogant and very ignorant in foreign, in foreign affairs. Yeah, I want to bring you more data from the CGT and think tank survey. Over half of the Afghan respondents said the economy in Afghanistan is a more, at a more difficult position right now, Afghans became poorer in 2021 when the U.S. pulled out compared to 2001 when the invasion began. Um, uh, Professor Hakimi, what made Afghanistan's economy collapse under U.S. Um, you know, management and control? First of all, Americans uh, didn't have the plan to build an economy in Afghanistan. When it's planned for an economy of a nation to be built, there are certain indicators. For example, every economy has some infrastructures. Let's have some examples. In Afghanistan, not a single highway has existed or, or, or survived for more than two years after the American reconstruction because they were, they, were, they were building those highways in a very poor quality that after one winter, a heart of, harsh Afghanistan's winter, it collapsed, it vanished, nothing remained here. Not one, no one uh, single large-scale manufacturer uh, area was built in Afghanistan in the past 20 years. Afghanistan's infrastructure for the uh, agriculture is zero. We, uh, even w when we produce uh, Afghanistan agriculture people, when they produce fruits, we don't have the cold storage areas, even one single cold storage in whole country. Afghanistan is an agricultural country. We don't have it in all over Afghanistan. Afghanistan is full of water. Our water is flooding down to Pakistan, Iran, and other neighboring countries without any use in Afghanistan. We are exporting uh, uh, electric, uh, electricity from uh, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Iran, and all the neighboring countries, while Afghanistan has the potential to export uh, electricity to those uh, countries because we have a lot of uh, water in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, hydroelectric dams could be built in Afghanistan, but it was never built because Americans did not have the plan to build the, uh, uh, the economic infrastructure of Afghanistan. What the Americans planned is that they designed the Afghanistan government in the state like a dying patient in the uh, ICU ward of a, uh, 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 of a hospital. That the uh, Afghanistan state, nation and the government should live on the American assistance, day by day American assistance. Uh, uh, do, 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 uh, this is a confirmed information from inside the army of Afghanistan that the Americans were giving fuel on weekly basis to the army of Afghanistan, weekly basis fuel. If they stopped fueling the uh, army tanks and uh, armored cars, it, they would have stopped after, stopped after one week. This is the American mentality with the uh, economy of Afghanistan. They, because they were sure that 
they are never uh, permanent in Afghanistan. They will, they will never be here. So they, they did not want to build anything. In Afghanistan, we still have some infrastructures and some buildings, some roads built by the Soviet Union when they invaded Afghanistan. But for the Americans, even their military bases, they have made it out of bags full with sand. And when they were leaving Afghanistan, they were withdrawing. Right. They even destroyed that sand bags. Uh, so that's the mentality. How they could build an economy of a country? Well, um, very thoughtful uh, and very um, heart-wrenching and um, realities over there on the ground in Afghanistan. Thank you so much for articulating those ideas for our audience. It's very important. Uh, that's all the time we have for the moment. Professor Wang Li, I do apologize, but I do hope to catch you back in our program later on.